going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. Bringing you guys a kind of in-depth video when it comes to the ignition system. How many of you have purchased parts that you didn't need? Especially when it comes to a situation where there's no spark. Bike doesn't run. You open up the manual, require special tools, you don't have them, you can't afford it, you don't want to go to the shop to do it. So you start shotgunning parts at it. Brand new coils, brand new ECU, you've done all this stuff and you still can't find the problem. So in this video what I want to do is take the guesswork out of diagnosing a lot of those parts when it comes to a system that requires a special tool. In particular, we're talking about an electronic ignition on a newer bike, 90s, 2000s and up. They use ECUs, ICMs, all these different crazy things, and with a special tool like this, a direct voltage adapter, when you open up the manual and you see that, you, that it requires this insane tool that you will never purchase, having something like this to plug straight into your multimeter will be awesome when it comes to diagnosing ignition coils, pulse generators, exciter coils, those type of things that can cause weak, bad spark or no spark, as well as figuring out if the harness in between all of them is good or not. So. I could pack this video for an hour and a bunch of information, but we're gonna split it up into two parts. So in this video, I'll just be showing you how to use this peak voltage adapter with any meter that you have. It plugs straight in, it's awesome, and it gives us the correct reading that we need for testing out those little bit more involved, maybe over our head type systems. As always, this is bike specific. Your bike in your manual will show you exactly what type of ignition system your bike is using or charging system. This CB750 Nighthawk that I'll be using is a fully transistorized system. Now, I'm not going to go into explaining what that is, but your bike may or may not require a peak voltage test where on a lot of older bikes like even that Magna over there has a different system. It's a newer O2 where this is a 99, but the way that they're checking the coils and the pulse generators is through resistance. Whereas in the manual for this bike doesn't give us any resistance readings. You can typically check coils in a bunch of different ways, but on bikes that require peak voltage readings, this is going to give us the answer. So let's dive in. We'll jump into the 750 ignition system. It's a perfectly running bike. There is no problems, so that's kind of good to see what a good bike looks like. And we'll talk a little bit about this and what it really does for us. And if you want to learn more about your bike, how systems work, helpful tips and tricks when it comes to maintenance and repair, just join the mailing list. There'll be a link in the description below where you'll also get a free gift. It's a troubleshooting cheat sheet that I came up with to kind of help break down basic systems of the bike when it comes to diagnosing certain areas of them. Check it out. So if you ever were diving into your ignition system that's not working properly and you open up the manual and it gives you specifications for minimum values or specifications on peak voltage readings, 100 volt minimum, 0.7 volts minimum, peak voltage. Okay, it's not the same as normal DC standard voltage. And oftentimes, the signals that are being sent to the coil or from the pulse generator, the frequencies are way too quick for a normal meter to even pick them up. Okay, it's just, it's unable to read those voltages consistently to give you a good reading on the meter. So, direct voltage adapter allows us to get a much more consistent reading that we can actually see. Because that signal is changing all the time, we're trying to grab the peak voltage of that signal, and this tool allows us to do it. So this Nighthawk uses a pulse generator on the left-hand side of the bike. It's a rotor that spins around a sensor, and as it passes, it's generating a wavelength or a signal being sent elsewhere on the bike. I'm not going to get super into it. That's kind of boring. But in layman's turn, the pulse signal is telling the spark when the spark, and it's timed. What we're trying to do is pick up the reading that happens when those two signals pass. Now oftentimes the books will tell you to give or take two different readings. Because that pulse generator wiring eventually makes its way to the ECU or the ICM, we can check it in two areas. Because the pulse generator is a part that can be replaced, it's gonna have one connector midway. Then it's gonna lead all the way to the ECU where you can check it there too. So when diagnosing, let's say a pulse generator specifically, you would test it in both areas. Let's say you have no spark at the spark plugs. You can test it with this DVA at the connector, unplugging it, spinning the bike through, or leaving it plugged in and back probing. That will give us one reading. We take that reading and then we go to the ECU. Now again, this is for a bike that maybe has no signal or not sparking. My bike does. Then we would go to the ECU, or you can start at the ECU. It doesn't really matter. You can do the same exact wires, the same exact way, back probing. You don't want to unplug the ECU when the key is on. Don't do it. So you can leave that stuff all intact. You can just back probe into it. And then you would take a reading at the ECU. If you have a different reading between the two, then either something in the harness is bad, or if you have the same bad reading overall, then it's likely gonna be the pulse generator. ECUs very rarely go bad. I can count on one hand the amount of no spark issues that I've dealt with where the ECU replacing it fixed the problem. So enough talking about it, let's just see what it looks like. All right, so here on this bike, we have our 
this is where the pulse generator lives, okay? Harness comes out. In the manual, it tells you exactly what connector it is, where it plugs in at. I noticed that on this model, this is a 99. If you look into the 2000s manual for these, they locate the pulse generator on a different connector. So pulse generator on this bike, this year, goes into a four pin connector, okay? Whereas the manual, if you look at like a 2002 Nighthawk, they're saying that the pulse generator, two wires go into a connector all on its own. But it, it doesn't really matter because all we need to know is where the wires are for it. On this bike, it is the yellow and white with yellow or yellow with white, something like that on this four pin connector. Yeah, so a solid yellow wire and then a white wire with a yellow stripe. So what I'm going to show you guys is the readings of both with and without our, we'll call it our peak voltage reader. So in the manual, it calls for the peak voltage reading of the pulse generator to be 0.7 peak volts. We will be reading that in DC. So back probed into there, we have a, on a uh, 200 DC volt setting, we can go down to 20. We're asking for 0.7 is what they want. Key on. I'm gonna plug this vacuum line up and see what we get. So that would show me that it would be out of spec, okay? Because I saw that it spiked at one point, but it's just not a very consistent reading that we can see, and it looks like it tests bad. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Same exact test. This hooks into any multimeter that you have. You don't have to have these multimeters. All right, we'll do the same exact test, all right? Key on, let's hit it. Now we have a consistent reading. Three point, that's, I mean, what, four volts, 3.7 volts? Minimum is 0.7. Our other reading did not give us that. This allows us to get a very consistent reading out of that system. I'm not gonna go much further past that, I mean, there's, Sometimes too much information is a bad thing, but I thought it's really awesome to be able to have a tool that you guys can get Instead of having to go buy it like an ignition mate Which does the exact same thing does a couple of other stuff as well But you can get an adapter for your meter that does high-end or more involved systems like on newer bikes in your garage Now can you go to an older bike or an older 80s bike and start plugging in a peak voltage adapter and try to test coils and exciter stuff? Probably not because they either A might not have the system, B the manual is not giving you any type of parameter because you can't take this parameter and go to the, another bike and use the same thing. You could use it as a maybe like a test dummy, you know, and see if it is anywhere near what a normal reading on like one of these systems would be. But regardless, if the manual is not providing you with some type of specification of where it can be, you're kind of just shooting blanks. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll actually go after the coils and see what those readings can be, as well as some other helpful checks on just standard coils that I think might help you guys out when it comes to testing a coil. But that's it, guys. I, I thought it would be helpful to show you guys a cool tool that you could use and what it would look like to test that system on a topic that I think isn't really talked about too much. Again, most of the time, what I hear people doing is just buying new parts, buying new coils, buying new ECU, because they just don't have what it takes material-wise to do the correct test. Or sometimes it can just be a little bit intimidating in the manual. I think that this should help some people out. So thank you guys so much for hanging out and checking out this video. See you guys next week. And again, if you guys want to learn more about your bike, maintenance-wise, repair-wise, join the mailing list. Link in the description will take you to it. Again, the free PDF download. You can check me out on Instagram forward slash TheMotorcycleMD. And you can hit up my website, TheMotorcycleMD.com. Check out some of the courses I have. I do have some premium level stuff when it comes to like videos like these where we dive more into maintenance and repairs on your motorcycle, as well as tons of carburetor helpful stuff that I think you guys will really enjoy. So as always, Cody from MotorcycleMD bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you guys next time. Later.